guys, Parla here. Thank you very much to my producer for reminding me. I should refer to the next match as game eight, not match number two of day two. That's right, everybody. We are in the, well, not exactly the final moments yet. We're on the final day for NA at, here at the GLL Apex Legends series. And we're seeing some interesting stories develop. TSM are showing us now why so many people speak their name. They've taken the first win today, and it was Hal with a fantastic moment of play with the help of his team, uh, just as he did yesterday. And so that is what has occurred so far. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens in match number two. I'm joined on the desk still by Glitter, and as our producer refers to him, Lex Luthor. <laughs> It's fitting. I mean, Lex Luthor is handsome, <laughs> very smart. He is evil. Also, <laughs> <laughs> he's also I mean, a maybe super villain. Maybe slightly more yeah. than I thought it was originally. <laughs> he is also a super villain. Yeah, that's true. I mean, let's be honest. I don't pull any punches when it comes to uh, calling people out on play. Out so. of the three of us on the desk and the two of us um, over at the cast booth, who would be most likely to be a super villain? And why is it Dreadnought? <laughs> <laughs> Dread, I love you, buddy. Uh, he's, uh, yeah, he's definitely the one who can put together the master plan. Like, the over-elaborate, unnecessary master plan. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. That's dread yeah. all over, I've got to be honest. Definitely. I'll, just, I'll yeah. just be the enforcer or something, I don't know. Guys, I've got some good news for all of you at home and for our players. The match is pretty much ready to go, so we'll go to our casters shortly. Is there anything you guys would like to say before we head into it? I hope a different team wins. That's what I'm looking for. You were saying that all through EMEA as well, and we pretty much saw that other than just a couple times. Yeah. It, it definitely makes the scoreline tighter and creates more drama, so I would like to see that as well. On set? I just want to get into the games. I don't want to keep the people waiting. Let's get into the games if we can. All right, so <laughs> Dreadnought, Bravo, over to you. Ready to get into the games indeed, Dread. You and I are looking at some numbers from what we've seen so far. I think, first of all, for CLG, uh, yes, it's a second place, but in terms of the kills column, it's not enough to really for, fly, get them flying up the leaderboard. I think they're going to need to, uh, it's going to be a big morale boost for CLG. Yeah. They should be happy with the fact that they're starting strong today, but I think they also need to recognize that they need to play act differently in terms of the kills column if they want to really get up into the upper side of this scoreboard. Yeah, and that's been something that on the formulation of the original format and coming to play, how important are the kills? We concluded that very clearly uh, they very much are one, and CLG, even after that last Last one, I think, yeah, as you've already said, it's got to be at best a morale boost, I think. You know, yeah. uh, I think personally, I don't know if I would even be able to lie to myself and feel that way if I did play an overly defensive and just on placement, but these guys are pretty experienced, and I would hope to see them rely on that experience to be able to translate into better results here day two. Right, TSM also off to a very different start than what we saw yesterday. Yep. Uh, not only is that a win for them, but it's also a 24-point win. If we take a look at exactly how that came in, of course, 12... Uh, placement points, but also 12 kills. Yeah. A 24 bomb is a pretty big one, especially when you look at T1 uh, at, w at 12, and then you also had FlyQuest at 16. It's, 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 it's a pretty good amount of points on the board. Keep in mind, though, uh, Based on what we saw yesterday after Hal's amazing win, yeah. right, the game after that, they placed 10th. So I think a lot of people want to bet on, okay, I think even you and I were saying, TSM is probably going to run away with this. We don't know that just yet. They yeah. will, TSM is still in third, and they're still down by quite a margin, right? T1 with 86 points, TSM with 68. So it's still quite a ways to climb, and they've got a number of big opponents in their way. Yeah, but I, I, there's always something inside that, though, Though I do want to be like, you know, keep it keep it calm, like, you know, that's one game from TSM. At the same sense, I, I feel like they're the only roster uh, that has really been like, every time you doubt us, watch us prove it wrong. So, I, yeah. so back and forth. I, I, I hate to say it, but you're right, Dredd. It, it's not like they've come out to every tournament and just been like, not a single lobby will go a different direction other than ourselves, right? But then every time when it really comes down to the win conditions, they are the most successful. And that's been in basically every iteration uh, we've really been able to see at the highest end of competitive Apex, so a little bit of a split drop here as well. Uh, Depot, as you actually see, it's going to actually be a pivot over here, all the way up towards the high ground. They aren't the only team we actually have seen do this so far uh, out of just an A. Even on our original drop, the perspective, I believe it was T1 was going for a bit riskier of a split up at first, I believe, until they saw uh, you know, that there was more teams going for the Mirage Voyage, and that is the continued drop here for T1. Yep, uh, T1, of course. Uh, keep in mind, just a few days ago, this Mirage Voyage new uh, limited event here, uh, 
took place on the map. It just dropped, and really dropped in the center of T1's entire drop. We know from scrims that T1 can often be seen around Springs End. That's the area just northwest of the bridge, which is also very close to Hot Springs and the high ground. We think of that kind of uh, diagonal line as all the areas that T1 has been known to loot early game. So Mirage Voyage actually was slammed straight down into the middle of T1. Glitter was talking to Kurt before the event, wondering, how are you guys dropping? Are you guys sticking with it? And they're like, yeah, we're sticking with it. Now we just drop on Mirage Voyage. Now in the last game, we saw them stick close. They had to stay on white armor, didn't really get up enough points. We'll have to see what they do this game, but now also checking in with HPL. Got themselves a uh, pretty interesting position here. Definitely not the most lucrative when it comes to the gear, and I think you can see that reflected uh, not only in the weaponry and the fact that we have a Mozambique being picked up, but also in that armor. Uh, this is very much a scrap circumstance, and even rotationally speaking, uh, I, a lot of the areas out of this are not necessarily the easiest. We've been talking about the concern point of train yard and the entrance to it, and that's the exact direction we actually see them transferring. So Speaking of... Here you see Flanker and Liquid Blue actually in the train yard. Based off of the way they're moving, you can bet that they are uh, have been alone, or at least are alone now, as they now go ahead and try to loot through. Definitely going to be a struggle there, considering it's only going to be Flanker and Nocturnal here. And with only two out of the three, Team Liquid Blue here has to find a way to likely, I would say, change the game plan to more positionally in placement focused, right? Make those earlier rotations, maybe get yourself out of the train yard. I say that, but we already see the pings going down there about 270 meters out, just on the outskirts of the ring. So maybe some gatekeeping at drill site, if possible, seems to be the focus here. I mm -hmm. armor, I see armor. if they can get there. You and I talk about drill as one of, I mean, it's not really an area you immediately think of as, as very easy to gatekeep. It's probably one of the more open areas as we talk about being really able to be attacked from four sides, but Nade's coming in here for Space Station Gaming. Slick already down. Yeah, I don't know if they're going to be able to make it out here. It's a lot and beyond the grenades being the pressure. I think it's more so the person through that staircase that we see Space Station Gaming. Pressure through the ground floor. Peacekeeper shot's actually going to hit the staircase. Grenade right on top of Logically. He will be able to slide just barely out of distance here, but clearly people sharking here still on the first floor. Arc Star just out of distance, but they push up 48. That's going to break the armor. Second, so whiff, he needed that shot. And they will end up going down there. Even if he connects, unlikely to win that fight, but definitely the beginning of the end. That's actually going to be a rise that wins that battle. One of our qualified teams, Rise Nation, on your screen there. It's going to be Violent, JKW, and Midnight. Looking pretty good in their armor department now. Having the triple blues and being able to get to push in the kill this early on. It's got to feel good for a tone setter, but they got to make some kind of transition. Talking about awkward transitions Ooh. here, the goon squad. Struggling here as they made their way just out of that tunnel and immediately going to be met by FlyQuest. FlyQuest already gets that first knock. Broken shield you see there, just about on that second one. Going to be flying in here, and that is going to be that. He's right there, he's right there. Do you want to take more? One, one, one. Take TV with me. Take TV with me. They're going to go ahead and go through this portal, just listen in on those comms. Let's see what they, if there's any struggle here, any concerns. The Pathfinder should be able to track that down. Full precision choke triple take coming out from Mirko here as they find somebody in the train yard. Ooh, ends up missing with that one. Uh, precision choke at that distance when fully lined up. If you end up connecting, some of the highest damage uh, out of any, we any weapon in the game. Actually, closest thing probably comparable to a Kraber, really. Right, and we actually haven't seen too much triple take play here, and not really that we were expecting to. Certainly haven't, haven't seen it much in scrims or the meta either, but we did see a little bit of triple take towards the end of Europe today, and also seeing Mirko there putting that weapon to use as well. Saucer here now trying to continue cleaning up what seems like at least one pick on squad that they ended up finding. Seems like they did get the retreat, and they aren't going to be too eager to get the full pursuit. Now here, MHR. Going to rely on, actually, you can already see just by based on the lack of bat or moving over cells, helping seems pretty confident. They're going to wait that whole time out there for that generator to get those shields up, yep. try and keep those resources high. Slow heal there for them, but now looking also at Sentinels. Some big shots coming in for Senox. He was forced to retreat, actually. Because he's going to coming in for everyone. He may have to gen if they end up deciding to push through that choke just because of how much time they need to be able to heal and restore balance there. And Young Guns now holding this, owning this building here right in front of one of the most difficult chokes of the game to their south. Any teams that do try to rotate 
out of Thermal will have to meet them unless they want to take the tunnel or take one of the longer routes around. And the circle does have a lot of opportunities on where it could officially end up concluding, but it does seem like yeah. it's likely to be similar to where we got last game, similar with the TSM victory, somewhere in the outskirts there, just to the left-hand side of the fuel depot and to the south of the train yard. Yeah, and speaking actually of teams that still need to get out of Thermal, uh, count Rogue into that. Rogue, actually, their drop is Thermal, so not terribly surprising to still see them here. However, dropped already being down and needing to be delivered to a beacon. They've got beacon options, of course, at yeah. Thermal. So we'll see. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, there's three down at Thermal. So they'll have a few options for getting him back into the game. Then they're going to have to rotate back up together. Lou here on the Pathfinder here for FlyQuest. Seems like they didn't end up finding. I believe the kill that they just found. Actually, it wasn't this target, actually. So I'm incorrect on that, but it is going to be complexity trying to find their way through. Gabe's mon was able to heal up, and Reptar will end up surviving here. The question is, is can they get into the circle and survive with more than just a Gibraltar bubble keeping them alive? Because they need a lot of time here to keep the balance in their favor. Now they're going to have a moment to pop some heals, slow things down, and then decide exactly how they want to continue moving south right near that skyhook choke and potentially have to go all the way down through. trying to get as much information as they can at this point in time. Honestly, I'm in awe he was willing to shoot there. Um, this is one of those moments where I'm thinking that's got to be Rise Nation in the distance because we did see them push up to Refinery to take down Goon Squad. And we'll have to see if that is the case. It's actually, they're going to be already be in Capital City, so it's not Rise Nation. Yeah, they somehow made a pretty big trek because we did see it was FlyQuest who ended up getting the kill onto JKW, transferring through the epicenter itself. Yeah. Uh, and they're actually just going to flat nope right out. No recovery opportunity there for JKW, and I think very much understandable. Uh, but instead, going to rotate towards that northern end and not try and take a direct path immediately through Capital City into this next circle. And I personally like it. I don't think there's really any overly easy transition at this point, but I don't think sticking around Capital City is in your best interest. Uh, if you want to, you know, yeah, not have chaos in your near future. Them now taking a look at Pittsburgh Storm, a team that we talked about quite a bit. And they're in sixth place, so pretty good positioning in terms of really being able to put together a respectable performance by the end of the day. It's a team that we talked a lot about in the pregame before the tournament, but have not been a major talking point throughout the day. Pretty consistent, however, not yet in that top three, but a lot of hope for this team. If we take a look at the placings they've had, throughout Professional Apex Legends so far. I think a lot of people being on the same page with those placings are not reflective of their skill nor their potential. Interesting position here with our glance in onto the young guns. We're looking to be able to gatekeep here. Seems like they have found a couple of targets out in the distance, but for now, they'll just hold their own. We'll see what FlyQuest ends up discovering here. Well, we know we're sitting, sitting here. On this is good for you us. just heard that. Well, no, no, no. We'll it listen to FlyQuest discuss this no, end ring. Open. It ends open. We go for that train car, right? I don't know if it ends there, dog. I'm telling you it ends over here. Hey, we'll just play, yeah, we'll play, we'll play right there and then walk through. Should we play this, this train late? car is definitely taken, I Should think. we play this late this train? One? I think we just play like right here and just wait. I mean, like we have to accept the fact that... The whole game? I, I think we have to accept the fact that we're kind of fucked if we try and rotate. Yeah, to a I think spot. we play late. We're not. We're good. I'm gonna secondhand loot these. Uh, these. I mean, we have. Are, we already have like a fuck ton of kills. Like five kills is a great amount. Like we should just focus placement, no? Yeah. There's people in here. Right? I don't there, think man. that's gonna happen, okay. man. I think we might need to go around field depot and, and come in late field depot and come into the tunnel. We could always go. All the thing is, is rotating across this field yeah, is we're fucking. Not, we're not gonna, make, gonna be forced to come to us. Really respect yeah, hearing yeah, them yeah, try and yeah, accept yeah. some of the hard truths yeah. they may have. People, I feel like Another hard truth waiting in that tunnel is TSM here. If they are stupid enough, we will kill them for free. And we do know. We also, we also saw a TSM versus FlyQuest battle yesterday. Really a bottom sorting on the low ground. We'll have to see if FlyQuest can once again repeat. But lots of interesting conversation there. And a little bit of you hear the continued conversation about exactly which end circle this is once again. If you're just oh joining us, oh gosh, he needs to get out of the way, he does Mirko now flying through. He's got a lot of cover here in Hill Valley. There's a lot of elevation changes, a lot of rocks. It looks yeah. very wide open, but there are ways to angle yourself around train yards. He's got to stop, but he needs his bubble. He needs to stop moving until he gets his next bubble rotation. No. I don't think there was any, once he was able to get into the circle, I don't think he had, anybody had a shot on him enough, and I can't but feel like he was going to need the
that to make some transition. Mm -hmm. We'll see if it works out there for complexity. Liquid, though, still maintaining the train yard. A continuous thought process, it seems like, here for them. Really Great good connection. The G7 scout is not easy to hit that many no. shots that consistent on a single Especially fire. with a player changing direction. Like yeah, that. it's because the rate of fire of the bullet is actually very slow projectile speed. Uh, excuse me, projectile speed, not rate of fire. Projectile speed is so slow, unlikely to connect that consistency. So good bleeding here from Nocturnal. Definitely great shots from up top train yard. This is actually one of the places you heard FlyQuest talking about. They do want to get one of the upper train cards if they can, but of course suspecting that well, many of them would be taken at this stage in the game, and that is indeed the case. Now, back on board with FlyQuest, who actually looks like they're going to try to push through TSM's tunnel. Well, here we go. Lou is just wasting no time there. Reps sits pretty low when it comes to the shielding, but not too concerning here. Hal goes ahead and peeks out. A couple of shots go by the head there, but he's going to just go ahead and feel the breeze and feel fine. Notice that zip line that TSM actually has down so they can go back and forth between both sides a little bit quicker if they would need. Also, the juggle dodge some of the shots. It's actually really clever. And are they going to make a cheeky train play there? You hear this from FlyQuest. Might be a drive-by. Let me see how much damage doesn't do a lot. The thing is, is like, TP Zach. Oh, where the fuck are we going to rotate into? You know? You're going to have to TP Zach. I don't know. I don't know. But if we're I committing TP, to this. We're going to have bad no, rotation. We can't right. TP right now. I have five strangers, one med kit. Yeah, same, actually. Oh, he used the grapple. This is concerning. If anybody's on this side, he has no opportunity to retreat whatsoever. Interesting to hear the chaos, though, coming out yeah. from FlyQuest. Um, clearly, not on the same page. Right. That being said, I think it's understandable. Yeah. We, we, we do know that Monsoon is the main in-game leader. We also have heard that Zach does a little bit of secondary play calling. We'll have to see how they can navigate here through Hill Valley towards Train. They're playing around that outer ring, and they only have 38 seconds. Sitting very, very close to them here is actually HPL. Yeah, just really over that little ridge. And you can see they're starting to turn around and might be aware that there is a team behind them. Based on Pride's movement, that likely is the case. Now Lou and team just looking straight down that same sight line. And if we were to assess gear, I'd be willing to say that this is FlyQuest on the back foot, at least, again, only on the gear front on the skirmish. They only have 15 seconds before they make a transition. They need to go. And to be honest, it's even worse because they used the Pathfinder Zip to use it earlier to get into his zone while they could have been using it here in the time that Pathfinder literally needs it to enable the team to be able to get it up. I'm not going to say that that was the beginning of the end, but it is one of those moments where you got to wonder, was that necessary? Because it may be right now. All right, here you go now. Blue and team are going to fly up back to Nocturnal on Liquid Blue, who does have this train car. And honestly, if, if Team Liquid Blue somehow pulls out a high placement here, I tip my hat, man. That's very impressive to start this game on such a back foot and to be able to hold their own. They're in the middle of everything, and it seems like, I mean, it's clear that they're not dripping in gear here with the fact that we're looking at a Spitfire Scout with mediocre uh, ammo, but... Right. Also, flanker still on white as well. This might even yeah. be the first time we've seen the Spitfire Actually. on screen, but we're actually checking with Rogue who is on the bottom of Spring's End right now and uh, really playing hard edge of this zone. So the next circle is going to highlight whether or not FlyQuest was right. I personally thought that they were, and it's going to be that weird train station just below the uh, train tracks itself with that high elevation difference. Right. But it doesn't look like it's the case, at least for now, right here, kissing a little bit of this house that we do see T1 inside of. Now taking a look here at the T1 side. In that last game, Number seven, saw them placing third overall, currently still sitting in first yeah. with 86 points. And there we got a better view from Rogue actually highlighting it there. So this house is going to still be in it, but technically FlyQuest and the pings originally, I don't know whose voice that was that hi highlighted it, but they were correct on that decision. Look at this, on the high ground though, making a wider and a little bit slower of a play towards this is going to be Sentinels. And I think Smart, considering we've got 15 squads remaining here in round number four, See what their thought process is. Also, great weaponry choice considering the situation. A wingman at this level of distance and kind of play is going to really help them out, especially if the high ground. To have a wingman to be able to just constantly fling bullets is one of the best weapons to have that kind of chip away, especially uh, pre-scout. I mean, did you see young guns there holding down that tunnel choke? Double portal pickup, and it looks like it went to the left building there. It's a convenience that you can see a little bit of the animation in the direction that it's going to go as it flies through for anybody who maybe not that avid of a Wraith. I, don't, I, I guess if you aren't a Wraith player, if you aren't playing against them, I don't know if you're playing Apex Legends, so yeah. I take that back. Yep. Pretty comfortable position here. I mean, anyone who's played 
these hot springs ends, the typically being able to hold this high ground while teams flounder below and really get scattered trying to somehow stay alive as they get pushed in buildings as well. This is where you want to be as long as you can. Granted, you're open to a bunch of different angles if teams do come safe from the high ground or come up in from behind. But at this stage, with 13 squads left, right now have pretty good angles to engage teams that are going to be fighting below. Let's go this way. I'm gonna try to, TSM I'm gonna try to this. I might die here. have I'm made a rotation. Cell. Actually, hear the comms. Somebody yeah. claiming that they may end up going down. And they're actually going to be going towards bridge here now. The portal be is down for how? Yeah, and they're going to be able to run in. It looks like that, unsurprisingly, going to go to that first level of the bridge. They're going to be able to take that, and they're going to really moments away if they continue forward being right near Sentinels. They have to win this fight. That's 91 and a crack on the single target. Imperial Howe, second clip, that's 65 into a purple. Pretty lit. They need to push this. They cannot wait whatsoever because of that circle forcing them in. Double grenade coming through. Nothing going to connect there, but TSM tracking them down. Let's go ahead and listen. You hear them saying, make a play here. Do not peek. Do not fucking peek. 13%. We're safe here too. We're safe here too. Do not peek. Just hide. We're staying here. We're staying here. Yes. Found a home. Enemy down. Your I'm HBL here. though, looking to try and establish theirs inside the actual building there with the great wings man shot to find the first knock on one target. Still 13 squads, and we really only know where four are is. There's not that much playground here, Lep Bravo. Pride is actually gonna get uh -oh. this off. No, but somehow forced what? attack. Is he about to win this battle? Does not get the switch. Looks like he tried to swap out from the wingman, but kept it out, and he will go down. So now checking back in with T1. That was about two shots away from being perfect there, and the opener looks so clean for a second. T1 though, looking way better in these later stages of this game when yep. it comes to their armor. Likely in the remainder of the resources there, pretty good when it comes to the heavy ammo. Not needing 189 there for the wingman. Got to appreciate, Trevor, what we heard from TSM. They went from, in a single moment, saying we need to make a play here to very quickly, as a group, deciding, no, we're safe here. We can just take a moment to heal and then rotate from there. So yeah. still looking pretty good in this game as a reminder. They're in third, and we're expecting big things from them today to get back on top. Yeah, and Peach actually somehow survived. with taking a risky, I felt like, push up there for a second. He ends up throwing down his own bubble to get some breathing room. Watson on the inside, not able to threaten just that glass. We'll end up stopping those bullets, but wondering if they're going to push out through that door. We got 13 seconds, so somebody's got to make a move. Is it the indoor? Is it the high ground? Who's going to make that decision without a Wraith portal? It's pretty concerning here for Saucerer. Keep in mind also those Sentinels tracks completely pushed out just about. If they are still up top on that little bit of bridge that you can see that's still in it, they're going to be forced. Yes, they are. That's exactly where they are. Then the tiny bit of bridge that's still in, they are going to be forced down as well. They may or may not know that TSM is directly below them at this point. And T1's going to get ripped apart there. Good couple of wingman shots there for Senox. Good amount of ammunition as well when it comes to the 99, one of the bigger concerns at this state of the game. And at this point, they are just with, unleashing. Uh, and with four seconds now, where what is their play down? Are they going to drop straight down? Are we going to see a zip go up from Zombs? Let's go see exactly how they play this. I think a lot of it's going to depend on TSM. TSM's below them. When does TSM have to move out for now? Yep. It's basically Sentinels and TSM having a gentleman's agreement of everybody out there, we are going to kill you first and then figure out each other yep. a little bit later. Senox does take out that Chen right wow. away. And they're going to continue to have free reign and really free sight lines all the way down into Hot Springs now with six squads left. And this is one of those moments where because TSM not going with the older composition or maybe the newer one with the Gibraltar, they can't threaten this top zone. And actually that, I believe, is TSM zip. And if they move out whatsoever, that is a very easy threat here, at least right now, for Sentinels to get rid of. But if they do wait for the entire closing of the circle, it's likely that actually uh, Sentinels will have to move just a skosh earlier there than TSM. We see Rogue tucked against these buildings. We talked about these yesterday. Of course, very, this, the same exact building structures that you find in Geyser, where teams are forced to play in these very low levels and outside the edges here. They need to connect with some of those. That's going to be a first opener there. There is a generator up on top. 24 seconds until Sentinels will have to move down. Look at it. They're going to go ahead and make an early play, and we don't know where TSM is. Likely going to shoot some of those shots at them. Here we go with Pittsburgh Storm. Their perspective actually sitting down below. Maybe able to take down. That could be that could be a how cue that we just saw. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, from that level, that should have been TSM. They did just make the move in. I don't believe they ended up going down. And if so, yeah, here they go. You are right. They were the ones who made that transfer into the inside, and it seems like it was pretty safe here. 
and Hal finds an empty house. When we talk about good real estate deals, this would be one that I would put on the list. Yeah. Absolutely. They're Sentinels, though, not looking too shabby on their decision-making either. Now maintaining the high ground. Quick couple of spray coming out. Senox unable to find the full knock, but an easy break there. It's going to be Pittsburgh Storm that's trying to find that push in, and TSM still waiting on the inside. We do have two extra squads that we don't necessarily have all the information of where they are, likely going to be a bit crippled. Saw Hail Mary Arkstar go down, but I don't believe it landed. And a fight still happening on the outskirts. You can hear those shots likely going to be Sentinels. Based on what we see, saw, we should be able to see that res come in. How long it will last is a different story, but they do get Hodsik back into the frame. They're taking a lot of time to be able to heal up. Uh, this is one of those moments that if anybody is scouting up above and does get the information based on the more than 10 seconds that they're taking to heal up, which is the longest amount of time it should take because that is a Phoenix kit, uh, it's going to be a bit of a pain. It doesn't cost them there. And we do see it's actually Rogue sticking together here with that low ground, one of those five squads. So we have one other one that we have yet to see uh, the information on. Because we are looking at attacking interiors and rooftop strat, it goes back to the point we talked about earlier, really being able to just shoot and look at the same line, same sight line and team shoot together is going to be a big difference maker here in these final battles as we look at some nobodies in the mix as well. But I do think that it is likely going to be advantageous most for Sentinels, just purely based on having that high ground opportunity and be everybody has to move outside of this building on that next circle. It will force them to move out. And so it's really whether or not they can zone them off, get the proper grenades to be able to threaten teams like TSM as they make that transition in. Let's go ahead and listen in now to this uh, the planning here that's coming in from the TSM side, exactly how they're going to approach this there with 30 seconds left. I'm going to tell you to stick me, okay? Okay. When I, when I tell you to stick me, you do that. And then you watch do the stairs, you watch the stairs. I'm going to pre my portal. Yep. Watch am, the stairs. They're breaking the fences. I'm, I'm pre my portal. My portal. Right. Watch out for so it's going to be a pre-stick onto Hal as the call while he has the portal. The question is, does he keep the portal on him while he's going for that? I think he would like to do so. He ends up going out into the open and then pulling back all the way. The Arkstar, I believe, did end up going off. And now here, Sentinel's the high ground, going to have a big advantage here as we're two seconds out. Everybody's got to move out of this house. And it's about to get Just hot thermite. here. Thermites are going down for Sunox and Sentinels. They will hold down the rooftop. First knock does come in there on Protectful. And look at this, the zip juggle as well. Great job bringing out the grenade beforehand from Senox. There he goes. He's going to keep bouncing as best as they can. Everybody trying to look up. They land into the middle of the fray. Senox going to be the first to drop, but Retsy and Zoms looking pretty good. Retsy now falling down to 25% HP. Rogue is actually looking good. Huskers with a bit of HP himself. They go down. But how? Deep cop, look at that kill feed. My goodness, just picking up all sorts of kills. And did he ever look good? Throughout to, that battle. He has to be able to find the self res and he doesn't yep. know who has it. It's actually Hal, Hal who has it. Let's see which one. He's just got to get rid of all the bodies there onto the ground itself. Ends up going through the portal. Oh my gosh, he's going to take a tick of damage. He go no, does not take the tick what? of damage. And he is the champion there and gets the what? kill. Any other? Oh my, he... <laughs> Do we have... I... Okay, for anybody wondering why I'm sitting here just not knowing how to even begin to start this next sentence, it is because the ring and the circle clearly this zone, it does that. damage. We saw nine kills in the end for Decop. That entire kill feed was Decop, and I have to ask what happened there because I think Sentinels bumped into each other and they fell off their top zip and they stopped the zip juggle, I have to imagine, much earlier than they would have wanted to because there were still several players alive in the bot. One person should have remained with the this, battlefield yeah. uh, up top yeah. for a little bit later to try and stall that out as long as possible. Not too much focus was going towards the top half of everything, but I, I would argue that isn't even the wild side. Decop should have died. Decop literally should have taken circle damage. The reason he didn't is because the tick wasn't fast enough to actually proc him. They, literally, he would have walked out, died, and Imperial Howe, amongst all the graveyards sitting in the middle of that circle, would have been the yep. victor due to a knockdown red shield. Like, do you understand how uncontrollably lucky Decop just got in that circumstance by accidentally walking into a portal? Yep, that is exactly what we saw, and that is another wild finish. <laughs> but for the Pittsburgh Storm, they can chalk that up as a big, not just a victory, but a kill heavy victory as well. We'll have to see exactly what the entire team had, but we did see at least nine kills. Actually, we did see their uh, their game end screen, so we saw nine, at least nine kills coming in from them. Let's go ahead and hear from the analyst as well. It's another wild finish there I don't have at Hot Springs, guys. Pittsburgh Storm, the former Pittsburgh Knights and Tempo Storm roster that came together, getting a W there here on day two. It looked like you wanted to jump in there, Glitter. That was, no, first of all, that was a wild end zone. They, they were a team, a team that we were looking to 
see some really big plays come out of today. They had some decent games yesterday, but nothing like overwhelmingly amazing. They didn't pull down a win yet. This was their zone. I mean, like, that did... Okay, TSM's on the first floor. Rogue's underneath the building. Some nobies is above them. Sentinels was on the roof of the building. And it was here. And this is what they had to deal with. And somehow... At the end there, Pittsburgh comes out on top. And I swear when he went through that portal, I was convinced that he had lost it all. Yeah, I thought that he didn't have enough HP to survive to get back through that portal. But the reason that that finish was very interesting to watch for me is that reminds me of going back to the previous map that we were playing on the finishes due to the fact that we had numerous teams taking different levels of elevation towards that end circle. What that means is we're going to see every single type of mechanic used to try and out-survive the other teams. We saw Sentinels set up that zip line across. They were trying to juggle in, drop in, and try and finish off the kills for the damage that was done just below them from the grenades they were throwing in. Then we saw TSM trying to portal in and try to survive. Then we had the res shield possibility for How as well. And there's kind of that carnage at the end where the last player is trying to find the last player, and it and was How so many who has players. the res shield. And it's kind of like when you, you know, you see those really weird videos online sometimes where someone pokes a little bit of drywall and like a load of bugs come out. Uh, it was a little bit like oh. that. There was like loads of different players not? down in the little circle there and uh, he just couldn't squish the right one but uh, luckily got away with it, managed to out-survive uh, the uh, the other players who were still there and uh, yeah, they pick up a huge win. Sorry yeah. to make you uh, a little oh, queasy. Oh, a little bit there. Yeah, 2 a.m. here in Sweden. I don't want to be thinking about legions of bug boys <laughs> creeping out of walls and stuff, man. What if I accidentally knock this desk, desk too hard and then we've got a scene from The Mummy, 1998? Mm -mm. oh. No, no. Do you know what? That's actually, that made my stomach go just nope. a little bit there. Nope. Scarab going up my arm. And I, <laughs> no. By the way, I don't know if the release year was 1998. If that was an accurate guess, please let me know in the chat. We're going to get the scoreboard up shortly and then take a look at our overall leaderboard. I think um, with Pittsburgh Storm winning that, we're going to be getting into a situation again where things are closing in. TSM should have improved quite a bit on, on oh, their yeah. position once again, maybe moved up into third, uh, but potentially. Um, it's, there's going to be some changes. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, TSM is the one, is the one for me. I, I'm going to keep harping on about it because yesterday was such a, a weird outlier for a performance from them. To come into today and get first and then second and almost, again, steal away a first place. It could be back-to-back -back wins there for TSM. And before you know it, they could be top of that leaderboard. But they are uh, certainly started off on the form that we expected to see from them coming into this tournament. It's amazing what a couple of hours sleep and the opportunity <laughs> to go and... <laughs> don't giggle, because... Don't giggle, I know why you're giggling. And uh, it, the opportunity to go back and have a discussion and watch some VODs can do for a team. It's like they're a totally different team again. Yeah, I mean, we mentioned it before, right, Glitter, that these teams have had a chance now, not just to reflect on day one, but also to study day one and have a chance to come into day two with fresh heads and potentially more tools in their arsenals. Absolutely. And I know we're talking a lot about TSM right now, but we also need to remember that Sentinels is one of those teams there at the end and they were at the top yeah. of the leaderboard. That's a really, really good spot to be in right now to just continue taking down those points and being as consistent as they were on day one. Yeah, I'd agree with you. And the, the one worry for me, looking back on yesterday, kind of continuing today, of something that might be a bit of a hangover that one of the teams might regret not being able to close out certain moments yesterday, is T1. T1 got a pretty good placement in that first game, but mm -hmm. they got a little bit lucky in the way that it happened, right? There was one player alive. They may be with their drop should have done even better than they did. However, they sure. did get those placement points, right? And we can't take that away from them. But in that game, if you're falling out of that top five early on and you have those teams that are ahead of you or in that pack around you, like TSM, like Sentinels, all picking up points, you start thinking back to those moments yesterday where you could have picked up a champion's banner. You could have got those few extra points on the board because that could come back to bite you a little bit later on in the tournament. I, I even have in my notes that they, they I have T1 second again. So they were always like right on the cusp of just pulling down that win. And maybe we'll look at it today. Yep. Well, let's take a look at the scoreboard and see what happened in match number eight. Pittsburgh Storm with 10 kills, get 22 points including the first place finish. Sentinels in second. That's going to be good for them. TSM in third. Which other teams stand at? The Youngins and Frexes, for instance, only getting two points there. CLG dropping off after having a bit of a better game at the start of day two. T1, oh. again, yeah. 14th place. And again, something I need to point out here that, again, is a surprise to me and because we were expecting them to be one of the most consistent teams Complexity. That we've, we've seen. Complexity. I mean, they really are struggling. And even Team Secret, down right at the bottom of the table there, not the best of games to them, might not have had Fortune go their way right at the start. But this is how it looks now. And 
if you would have told me after two games <laughs> They're bringing of it today back. that TSM would be level on points after the performance they put in yesterday, I would have not believed you. Yeah, as not, simple as that. Yeah, not level quite yet. Uh, eight points behind T1. We're slightly far away from our screen. It's T1 on 88, TSM on 80, Sentinels on 77. Like, it's super close. I have glasses on as well. No, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> um, it is definitely a scoreboard, uh, leaderboard, I should say, that is tight in, in, in those top placements. I think we're going to be seeing a similar story to that of EMEA. Well, why are you guys giggling, man? <laughs> I can't, I'm literally, uh, by the way, the screen was, that I'm looking at, fine. there's a lot going on sometimes there while that scoreboard's yeah, up. One, there's a 45 inch screen here that I can't read with glasses on, and the other one is, Parler's really flexible. <laughs> whoa, whoa, wait a second. <laughs> Can we not talk about what I do when I'm not on camera? That's fair. Dude, that's a compliment. That's fair. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I was stretching out. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Either way, back to my point. I think we're seeing a similar story to that of EMEA, where on the second day, that scoreboard is tightening in terms of the points being not so widely spread. And that makes things exciting and dramatic, Litter. Absolutely. And, and I don't know if you noticed, but on in that second game, we actually had both Team Liquid teams on the right side of the bracket. They're not having the same performances today that they did yesterday. And I'm really looking for them to step it up a little bit. Thanks, guys, for your input. As always, everybody, we still have four matches to go. And as we've just seen from our overall leadboard here for NA in day two of the GLL Apex Legends series, things are close. It's going to be exciting. Don't go anywhere. Short break.